Hi all, and welcome to episode 5 of the Unseen Trans Podcast, where I, your host, Mo, am visually impaired and plan on sharing with you strands of my life. This is a crochet and fiber arts related podcast, although there will also be bits and pieces of the rest of my life woven in. I come to you from central Iowa, where I live with my four children, all boys, two cats, a dog, and my husband. I am, again, on a new microphone this time. I got this microphone from my brother for Christmas, and hopefully you can hear me fine. I think it's a lot softer, so I might have to go through and amplify this, but I think I'm getting a lot less echo, which is what I was getting with my husband's headset microphone. And with this microphone, I am not noticing any of the feedback or kind of electronic noises that I was getting with the other microphone. So let's hope that this time I have a new solution to my microphone issue. Although I probably just need to get a new earpiece with a working microphone since, like I said before, my earpiece that I am using to listen through, the feedback through the earpiece is fine, but the microphone seems to have had a short or something and no longer works. So it probably didn't have the best sound quality, but for the ease of use and only having one thing to mess with, I really liked having just the earpiece versus all these microphones and other things that I have to have for all these other solutions that my brother and husband have come up with. Anywho, if you would like to follow along with me on social media, you can find me under Mo's Crochet or Hooked on Mo's on most platforms. I am Mo's Crochet, which is spelled M-O-E-S-C-R-O-C-H-E-T on platforms such as Instagram, Pinterest, Goodreads, and Ravelry. You can also find me under Hooked on Mo's, which is spelled H-O-O-K-E-D-O-N-M-O-E-Z on platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. You can also type either of those .etsy.com to get to my Etsy shop. And finally, if you would like to follow along with my kids, they can be found under Mo's Kids, that's M-O-E-S-K-I-D-Z, on platforms such as Facebook and Etsy. I realized that during the month of December, I did not get up very much as far as this podcast goes. I did record on most days a little bit for Blogmas, but as you may have noticed, I only got up one of my segments out of five. So there are four more segments that I hope to get up at some point. But as we are now in the new year, I thought we would get started off again and I would just ignore my blog misses until I have the time to properly get them edited and posted. And I know that they'll be a little untimely, but I promise they will be up at some point. My kids just went back to school yesterday. I am currently recording on Thursday. I probably will record a little bit today and then a little bit tomorrow. So if my audio doesn't quite match all the time, it's probably because it was from two separate days and maybe best intentions that I will have this up on Monday. Let's cross our fingers and hope so. (laughs) But yeah, I don't even know where my past couple weeks have gone. I have been mostly working on my spinning project that was for our family friend, which of course I did not get done, but I did start to ply together. So hopefully before he ends up going back to Colorado, I can at least show him what his yarn will look like. I mean, I can show him what it looks like on the spindle, but that's not exactly the same as what it will look like when it's finished. I am assuming that it's just because I'm a new spinner and not very good at it yet, 
but I am having a lot of issues with breakage when I am trying to ply my two different yarns together. I guess I just need to look into more methods or better ways to keep the two yarns together while I'm trying to ply because what I did was I wrapped them both around tubes and then I have those tubes in a box and then have the string coming out of the box. But like I said, anytime I even like put it down to go do something else for a minute, I end up like with a broken string and then I have to knot it together because I cannot twist it back onto itself and have it actually stay together. So the finished product is going to have a lot more knots in it than I would really like, but I guess as a first thing that I've applied and made out of two separate materials that it's probably, even though it's going to look not as I would like it, it's probably not the worst thing ever. But yeah, if there's any other spinners out there that have advice for me, I'd sure appreciate it as I have lots of spinning that I'm planning on doing this year that I will get to in another segment, but I will probably record tomorrow as I am waiting on fiber to come in the mail. So I would like to do that with my actual fiber in my hands versus recording it now and just dreaming about what I'm doing. Otherwise, as far as works in progress, I don't have a whole lot going on currently. I still have all my plarn mats going on, although I haven't really worked on them recently. I never did end up finishing the stocking that I had started during the first day of Advent. I kind of think I'm going to end up frogging that and redoing it. As you may recall, or I assume that that made it into my blog miss because <laughs> it should be in the first five days. I started it and I thought that the pattern was a little large so I went back and worked it a little smaller and then when I got down to the heel which I didn't really like how the pattern designer worked the heel but I needed to make this heel a little different than what the pattern said to make it into the right gauge for the pattern and I forgot and worked the pattern, the heel pretty much as the pattern said. And then when I got done with that, I realized that in the next part of the foot of the stocking, it wasn't going to work out right because my pattern was 10 stitches smaller. So I kind of stopped working on it because I need to at least rip it back to the heel. And since I don't feel like doing the math, I think I'm just going to end up ripping the whole thing out. As far as the doll hat or doll costume that I had started, I haven't worked on that since like November, so that's kind of in hibernation mode at the moment. And then the only other thing that I can think of that I'm currently working on is a, it's just a granny square blanket that I'm making out of one of the mandala cakes. And I I might be about halfway done with that. It's, you know, just granny stitch, so it's pretty boring. It's kind of mindless crochet, and I can't find my other cake for that, so I don't know if I'm going to finish it anytime soon or not. I'll probably go out and buy another cake because there's a cow that I want to participate in that uses DK weight yarn, and that's what that yarn is. So since I can't find my other cake, which I don't know if one of the kids ran off with it or if it's just hiding somewhere, um, I think that I'll buy more because I can always just put the granny square thing aside and start something new. So it's not like it's hard to repick up granny stitch and start it over again. Then, as far as finished objects, I don't have a whole lot that I got done during the month of December. If I had ever posted my blog misses, you would have seen my sidewalk shawl that I had made. That's probably one of the prettiest things that I have made currently. I used to be a lot more adventurous with my crochet and then I've gotten a little boring over the past few years as I've had less mind space to deal with things. 
but I wanted to get back into being more adventurous. So I was making the sidewalk shawl to go along with the Goosey Fibers shawl along, but then that ended up not happening due to some unfortunate uh, situations that happened to her. But I still got my shawl done and then I was able to wear it to a concert and I've been kind of wearing it here and there. I usually wear it around my waist versus around my shoulders as it helps keep my shirts down and my pants up or you know that space in between it tends to help with that situation which as a mom of now 15 months old I am bending over a lot or getting down on the ground so anything to help that bare back situation is very much appreciated. Otherwise I did almost finish and finish a couple more cowls. I think there are two that I can actually call finished. One was the red one for Sam. It ended up having to be done in a smaller size than I would have wanted. I think it's it's either 18 or 16 stitches wide and the pattern calls for it to be I think 24 stitches wide but it will work still just as a scarf and I keep trying to tell him that he needs to be wearing it all the time because it's really really frozen here like the other day I think on January 2nd or January it wasn't yesterday so yeah on January 2nd Iowa was the coldest state in the entire country <laughs> which is not something that we typically get the title of since we do have Minnesota above us and several other states around us so that's just kind of funny that we were the coldest state in the entire country. I also got finished with a purple one that was supposed to be for my, I think that one was going to go to my sister-in-law, but we never actually got over there. Well, it was lost in the car and we drove past there on Christmas Eve and then we haven't been back up to that area of the state so she'll just have to wait for it. She doesn't know it's coming because they refuse to do any family get-togethers anymore. I don't really understand what the deal is with that but hubby side of the family has all sorts of issues <laughs> so I just go on and if I'm going to do something for people I'll just do it for her anyways even though I don't even know if it'll be appreciated but she likes to do things for homeless and stuff so I figure if nothing else she can donate it and I won't feel bad if she goes ahead and donates it even though I made it potentially for her. Then I have a couple more that just need to basically be sewn together. I know there's a blue one and I believe there's a purple one and the purple one I think I'm going to give to my little sister and I was going to do it the way that I had done the one for my sister-in-law but then I found out at Christmas that she's very much into turtlenecks and I think if I just do it like I did the boys cowls which is sewing them straight instead of putting the twist in it that she can wear it as a fake turtleneck for things when she's wearing a coat if that's kind of what she's into. So we'll see how that goes and if she likes it or not. She's also very into purple so the first one I had made could have been for either of them but since like I said she's into turtlenecks now I kind of want to do it without the twist in it so she can get that look of a turtleneck versus the look of the twisted cowl. And I know I have a pink one that I got started during Christmas. I can't remember if I finished that one or not. I know I didn't sew it together as I think I'm kind of going to leave them unsewn until I have decided on the recipient. So I know how I want to finish it because that's not a huge step in the process of making them. But I kind of wanted to pick out who they were for before I finish them off since it's a pretty simple and easy step in the process. Otherwise, my crafting life has been a bit boring lately. With the boys home from school, 
We've been spending a lot of our time trying to reorganize things, and with Christmas, it was just kind of reconnecting time and stuff. So I didn't get a whole lot of stuff done other than spinning and the couple of things that I mentioned earlier. So most recently, I have been trying to get caught up in my podcast that I've been listening to. I'm still very far behind. I keep thinking I'm making progress, and then the next day comes, and my list just grows exponentially. <laughs> but in this process, everyone's announcing all the cows, cows, or bells they'll be doing for the next year. And so I have been trying to plan out what I will be doing or participating in. If you are part of our Ravelry group over on Ravelry, that is the Unseen Strands podcast, I have started a list of, of cows that are going on this year. They are sorted by the dates that they are completed. So I started off with the year long and then there's a couple that either end in March or end in February. There were a couple that I had seen, but I had not actually added them to the list as I think there was one that I was not even sure if it had a prize. I guess some don't even mention prizes specifically, but they mentioned to post your FOs in a certain thread. And I assume if you're posting FOs that you're planning on giving out prizes, because why else would you need finished objects if you, you know, have the in-progress photos, you know, really need to mention finished object photos. But anyways, <laughs> I assume the ones that I have posted have prizes. And there are a couple that end in February and there are a couple that end in March. And then there's the year longs. Most so far have not been very specific. I know there's one that starts on January 7th that I haven't posted yet because they don't have a finished objects thread and pretty much if it doesn't have a finished objects thread yet I haven't added them to the list because I want to be able to link directly to the finished objects thread. I have linked everything to the group and to the thread and I would always say that unless it says you don't need to be a member of the group you should just assume that you need to be a member of the group to participate. But anyways, the one that starts on January 7th is going to be over a specific pattern, although you don't have to use the exact same materials. So that one I will be posting once the finished object thread goes live. But other than that one, I don't think there's anything that's very specific on the item. While I was listening to podcasts this morning, I did find out of another couple that is in one of my favorite Ravelry groups. So I'll make sure to add that one to the list sometime soon. That one is for blankets and chunky weight yarns. There's two separate ones and I forget, I think the blank, maybe they're both just for this quarter of the year. I can't remember. There might be one that's all year. There might not be. <laughs> we'll see. Just editing in that this cowl is actually for blankets and the bulky slash worsted warmer weight materials. You can do any blanket, any size, any material, but any other items need to be out of a worsted weight material or thicker yarn. So for a basic rundown, the Geeky Girls Knits podcast has their, I want to call it a quarterly crochet law, or it's not crochet, they're knit. Um, they have their thing, I guess maybe the other ones were two months, but this one was December, January, February, and that can be any item that you can tie to winter and you can fall back on the requirement that you made it in the winter. So pretty much anything you make can go in there. And I don't think that one had, no, that one is Ravelry Crafts, if I remember correctly. And this time they have added a 10 gram requirement, although they are looking into adapting that in the future. But pretty much everything I make is over 10 grams anyway, so that's not a very big deal to me. But if you decide to go and participate, just kind of a little info for you there. 
of course you will want to read through their rules because I'm going off memory and my memory isn't always the greatest. Another newer podcast to me is the Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast, and they are doing a Start All the Things, or I think they decided to call it Ready, Set, Go, or something like that. And in theirs, they pretty much want you to start things, and you can post in-progress photos. I think, I don't know if it's one in progress photo per week or one in progress photo per item per week but you can post your progress photos to get chances to win things in there and in the month of January they are giving you extra points I guess <laughs> for frogging items so if you post an item that you're going to frog and then post the finished the reclaimed yarn photo, you will also get, be able to enter that into their cow. They actually have two that are going on. The other one is a year-long crochet, well, sorry. I'm going to say crochet along because that's what I call them all, but most of them are make-alongs, so they include pretty much everything. But the other one is the pen hooks and needles tea and tails. And that one is going to be anything that you create that you can tie into T or tales, as in stories. And the stories they are asking to be related to a book, a graphic novel, or something of that sort. And not just, you know, some story you make up in your own head. <laughs> I'll also be participating in the Silver's Dreamlands podcast. This is Knit to Zero. And it is for pretty much most crafts. She is allowing things that aren't Ravelry crafts to be in it. And it's pretty much her attention of finishing all the things or getting all her UFOs dealt with. So if you, pretty much anything you finish this year is going to be able to be entered into chances to win things. And her cows are actually ones that I quite enjoy as this is one that I won four things for. She had one that was not quite the last half of last year. I think it started in September and went through December 31st. And I won a project bag, stitch markers, and two Ravelry downloads. I actually asked her if I could combine that down to a pattern book that was in between the two price ranges. So that was exciting. And so I'm hoping that I can, again, win some items from her. She is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to and probably one of the people I've had the most back and forth conversations with on Ravelry, even though she is strictly a knitter and I am strictly a crocheter. Pretty much the only reason that I won so many items was there was not a lot of participants. So I would highly encourage you to go over to her podcast because I don't mind having a little competition as there was pretty much me and one other person that participated. So we pretty much just went back and forth in who won what. And I actually won fewer of the items than they won. So I would like to see a little more love for her podcast so I don't mind again the competition. I also did win something from the Geeky Girls Knit podcast which is amazing because they have a lot of participation in their events so that was really exciting and I even won a hand-dyed skein of yarn which is super awesome. It is very gorgeous. And hopefully, I was hoping to make socks for my husband out of it, as it is a nice dark shades colors. But I'm kind of worried, since I don't have anything to do toes, heels, or cuff with that separate, as I have no solid color sock yarn, I might do it for myself, since I know there will be enough yarn for myself. But I guess we'll just kind of see if I can stretch it into a sock for him or if I need to just make it for socks for myself. Anyways, back to cows. I guess I'm having one of those shiny red ball moments. 
The Silver's Dreamland podcast one is for your finished items. And that is going to be for anything pretty much. I think she was going to go with a 10 gram minimum. And if you don't have 10 grams, you can always combine things into one post. That goes the same with the Geeky Girls Knits podcast. Another newer podcast that I started listening to is the Anna Knitter podcast. And she actually has three cows that she has going on right now. Two of them were all year long, and then the one goes through March. I know the treasure chest was all year as this ideally is to make a pile. Ideally, you could put it into a chest of items that you could gift. So anything that is made for someone else pretty much is able to be entered. There is also an ornament along, which is any seasonal ornament. It does not have to be Christmas, but there again, I believe it's all year and it's pretty much any ornament you make can be entered. And then the last one, I guess I said it ended in March. I'm not sure if it ends in March or February, but I think it's the end of March, is the, pretty much it's a stash reduction cow. What she wants to do is she has a bunch of balls that are a lot of not very much used or there's still a ton of yarn left. So it's pretty much craft from what you have to use up those odd bits. Not quite as little as like a cozy memories blanket, but pretty much just using up the materials that you already have and getting rid of those little bits that otherwise are just going to sit around and do nothing. I have already made two washcloths that I plan on putting into this one. I had gotten yarn from one of my neighbors and then we had a fire in our community that was in an apartment building and this had left one of the families that went to her church homeless and so she's been going around trying to gather things up for them and taking them around because she works for a church and so she's kind of connected to that charity aspect of the community so she had reached out to me to see if i had anything i could donate especially for their six month old son it's just the mom dad and son and sadly there wasn't a lot that i could do clothing wise because the twins are in 12 month clothing now and being six months the baby is going into nine month clothing and that is for at least sam and the twins a size that i only have the summer clothes for and being summer clothes i pretty much fudged with 12 months they pretty much went a lot of from six months to 12 months and since Jeremy was so small, he also kind of cheated the rules a little bit. So I don't have many, if any, nine months. I have a couple things, but even Leo sometimes still wears the nine month clothes. So I wasn't able to help with clothing, but I've been able to help with toys. And then from this yarn that my neighbor had gifted me, I'm able to make some washcloths that I'll be including so they can use those as dishcloths or washcloths but it's kind of a girly color so I assume they'll be used more as dishcloths but I thought that would be a nice thing just a handmade something special because starting off from nothing you don't even have things that are special anymore to you so I was hoping that maybe that would kind of lessen the blow a little bit Okay guys, well I got sidetracked or pulled away from recording on Friday and so now it is again Monday and I did get my husband to fix settings so I can get the sound through my speakers but at the same time now my microphone is recording at least twice as soft as it was before because as you noticed in the part a little bit earlier, I did an edit in and I had to amplify that 200% so that it was at least somewhere around the same loudness. So I'm going to have to edit this in and hopefully amplify it a little bit and we'll see how that works. And I don't know, I'll try to have him look at it and see if he can fix the microphone settings so that it's recording louder because this is kind of really, really soft. But I want to kind of finish talking about the cows I'll be doing 
there was actually more that I came across while catching up on podcasts over the weekend, but I'll stick to, there's only one really that I still need to talk about that I had started to record about on Friday, but this is one of the things that had sidetracked me, is I am doing the Yarn to Table Fiber Quest Cal, and this is exploring different fibers throughout the year. The first one is January, February, and this is Camelids, and this is yarn made out of camel, llama, or alpaca. And originally, I do have baby alpaca fiber to spin, but I would not be able to spin it fast enough to have it ready for the cow. So I had decided that I would just start with the mohair for spinning, but due to an issue with my order, which is what I discovered on Friday, that's when I was contacted about it, even though I had technically ordered back on Sunday and Sunday early in the day, so I was kind of disappointed that it took them that long to get back to me. But they were out of stock of one item, so I ended up with alpaca yarn. So now I will be able to participate in the first section of the cow. But I will be getting red mohair for the next section, which is March and April, which is goats. So that'll be your mohair and cashmere. And then the next section is plant-based fibers. And I already have linen and bamboo and banana fibers that I could have used for this part. But I decided that I was going to spoil myself as I really wanted this other fiber. And so I went ahead and got the rose fiber that I had been looking at. And this one is made out of 25% rose, which is uh, grounded up or uh, powder that's made into a fiber from the actual rose petals. And then it's 25% bamboo. And then there was another large percent, more than 25, but less than 50%. That was, I think it was 37% merino. And then the rest of the percent, somewhere in the teens. So 13% faux cashmere, I think. <laughs> we'll see. But that is going to be kind of a pinkish color because the merino is in candy floss. And then again, I already have some silk, but I have decided that I would rather be done with my sari silk by then. So I went ahead and ordered, it's a merino silk blend, and it is called Phoenix. It is 75, 25 maybe, merino versus silk. I think it was 25% silk, but I don't remember the exact amounts and then that would be the plants is May June so that's July August then September October is wool specific breeds but not merino so you can use any sheep but you can't use merino and I have ordered technically two I probably will ply one of the other fibers with I think it was called black Welsh is that a breed <laughs> and this is a blackish reddish fiber and it's a natural fiber so undyed and I got that one as well as I got some BFL and that one I got in amethyst so even ideally I could ply the two together as I think they're both kind of a rougher wool but we'll just kind of have to wait and see when I get them in and see what I can do with them and then finally, the last section of her cal is November, December, and this is for exotic fibers or more expensive fibers and harder to get. And I decided since Yak was one of the ones she had mentioned and one of their special boxes, because they've been doing one of those mystery boxes a month kind of things, and for... October they had I think it was October unless it was November anyways the yarn is called Yaktober so I assume it was October's box and this is a mix of yak and merino 
And so I'll be excited to start that. The Yak, I believe, is a natural color, and then it uses other fallish colors of merino in it. But anyways, that was the fiber that I was hoping to have actually in my possession on Friday. But I maybe might have it today. I guess I'll go, I'll have husband stuff by the box and see if we have any mail. Otherwise, probably tomorrow. I know it was supposed to be getting shipped out on Friday, but it took me a while to get the orders situated. They were really great to work with, but there was just some other glitches on their end. And so it took a little longer for me to get everything worked out and corrected than it should have otherwise. So it would have been nice if I would have gotten message like on Wednesday, so we could have gotten it worked out then. But I don't know, maybe they had an extended holiday for their workers. And that's why I didn't get contacted until 12 a.m. on Friday, which seems like a really weird time for them to be working on placing or filling orders. But anyways, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. There was some other things I wanted to talk about, but I think we're already getting pretty long. I know the cow stuff is kind of long and lengthy, and I didn't really have a whole lot of other interesting crafting content. But anyways, if you like this episode, I hope you hook the like button and subscribe. 